Mark Primer and Simon Tabernor are classic examples of what makes the Simple Lock Saloon Cars such a fantastic series. Drivers come from a variety of racing disciplines and in this case, different corners of the world. New South Welshman Primer comes into the Phillip Island event as a series regular whose careful and deliberate approach seems to be paying off. The brand new cars for this year, we actually waited a year to make sure the series was all going good, which it is and make sure the parity was right before we started our new cars. It's the brand new AU Falcons. Motor's not probably not as good as they could be, but they are fast cars just driven by a slow driver. Primer is naturally excited to be racing at Phillip Island. I like it all really. There's no fantastic places. There's a few bits that I don't like, like over the top of Lukey where it's you either make it or you don't, and I've not made it a few times actually over the years, but I, I like it. It's a good place. We're coming 15th overall. Slow and steady seems to win the game. As long as you can get there and keep going and don't wreck anything, there at the end, the points keep building up. This will be really difficult for those guys in the mid-pack. Oh, we're on board with Mark Primer in the dial before you dig 41. You might want to have them on speed dial today, I think, because we could see some cars getting very agricultural. Next year will be tough. Oh, Primer dial, dial, dial. <laughs> he's gone around. Unfortunately, he's always just stayed on the racetrack. Thank goodness. Because if he got himself backed in, he would be dialing before he digs. I wonder if there's a 1-800 dial before your spin number, because I think that might need to be on hand. Uh, safety car boards are out as well. That'll be for Bruce Heinrich's car bogged down at turn two. Here it is from the outside. Great onboard vision caught it, but here he goes. Loops it round, stays out of everyone's way. Bit of a traffic jam into Honda. But everyone got through and Prima will live to fight another day. Somewhat restrictions placed to keep some parity in place and the Holdens well and surely oh. a more competitive package. Look out, dial, dial, dial. Nicholson goes off the circuit. He just saw Prima glance over to his right thinking, I've been there not uh, so long ago. Absolutely right. Well, that was a big off. Here's the replay. And you'd just be hitting speed dial right now because you know <laughs> what's going to happen. Look out, Kwiatkowski's in trouble. He's in trouble. Manages to gather it up, or does he? No, he's gone. So, dial, dial, dial as well for Kwiatkowski. Oh, look out, we've got drivers oh. back. Oh, no, guess who? Dial, dial, dial. 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 Mark Primer around. Kwiatkowski just shot by. He's eventually got back onto the racetrack. He must have felt like he was in the Dodgem cars that Royal Adelaide show for a while there. Bed up when it hit the grass. It really did. Mark Primer. Oh, oh no. no. Dial, dial, dial. 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 Oh, he's gone around. How many times has he gone? He'll have eyes. Oh, my goodness. And Rouse, meanwhile, at the front of the pack, putting the pressure on Kevin Weeks. Here's the replay. Count him. One, two. He's gone around again from the other angle. There he goes. Oh, he'll have eyes like jackpot machines. Oh, he's so After lucky. That, in the background, you can yeah. see Prima, who really is going to have to dial because he is buried over the top of Lukey Heights in inclement conditions, to say the least. Roadworks sparked a spectacular gas fire at Cremorne on Sydney's Lower North Shore last night. A tar stripping machine ruptured a gas main. Two workers were lucky to escape. I've seen a flame underneath the machine and I just got out of there. As police moved nearby residents away, fire crews kept their hoses on the machine's diesel tank to prevent an explosion. The fire in Belgrave Street burned for six hours until workers managed to dig their way to a nearby valve and turn the gas off. Five for the final 12. I can tell you the, the cable cage crew were big improvers from Manly. Uh, not so good there, the crew from Maruya, the dial before you dig, boys. They had to be dug out of the surf there. And we caught a shot of Riley and Sun Food Services as well. They were good performers from round one. And here's one of the scarier accidents we had uh, during the heat. You'll see here, the Wild Beach boys, they started to skew right and went oh. straight over the top. Oh, the boys are going to get plenty of water. You'll see out the back here. Oh, hey, that's getting the highest hole before you dig. That could be the highest. Oh, my goodness. That's some serious air there for our sweep. Well, his name is Bert Hunt. I can tell you Bert's 59 years of age. He's nicknamed the Maruya Mauler. And one of his hobbies is stamp and spoon collecting. Well, I'll tell you something. There's more thrills in Ocean Thunder surf boat racing than collecting little spoons and stamps. And welcome back to the world, Bert. Everyone up! All right, get the blades out! Get the blades out! Now off we go to the women's and three heats. 
<laughs> and another big improver in this uh, in these heats from round two. Dial before you dig. They had trouble in the men's. The, the crew from Maruya and the girls. Some good solid results. The waves continue to pound the course creating lots of havoc for the girls who are just struggling to get out through the, the white water and get into clear water. Well, that's the way to catch a wave. Plenty of weight at the back of the boat and nice and steady into the shore break. Well, skilled and dull before you did, getting a little close, but they didn't touch and were able to, uh, to gather themselves in again. Accumulation of points in these heats, so important. You've just got to finish. A little bit of confusion there. They had the stroke and the bow uh, going every, for the run up of the flag. Everybody keen to run there. I think they just want to get out of the boat. Look out, look at that, just inches from the beach and, and a half a foot wave completely flipped the boat and turned it over. You can never relax in these sort of unpredictable conditions. Yeah, and you'll often see them trailing oars there and sometimes they're catching an oar and that's what's causing the boat to flip over in that shallow water, which can be very dangerous. You, when you capsize in the shallow stuff, you just can't get away from the boat. You need, the deeper water is actually gives you easier escape from the boat. You get harpooned by another crew. And lots of oars flying around, and I think that helmet's a very smart idea in conditions like this. Well, Lyle Clark's got the Grumman girls working again, and hello to everyone up at Elephant Rock watching the coverage. Great little surf club, great spot. And your crew, your girls' crew, doing you proud. Brilliant, brilliantly performed down that wave. Dull before you dig, trying to stay straight. The girls from Maria, and they're still on board. Only just. Uh, it's like a roller coaster. <laughs> this white water is just tossing them around like rag dolls. That was a brilliant wave. They finished off course. It was quite a long run to the flags. Manly Aluminium window second. Dull before you dig third. And Greenstone, big troubles and eliminated. So the fifth of the crews in the finals from Maria on the south coast in New South Wales. Dial before you dig. Sweet Miss Gavin Huntley's crew, Emma Warne, Taryn Langdon, Lucy Warhurst and Tara Huntley. We spoke to Senna. Look at the size of this white water. Um, the, unfortunately, the girls don't have the power of the guys. You can see, look at this. We've got three boats now upside down and we're not 30 seconds into the Do race. Do a quick stock take. PCL Pans and Alley 1, gone. Dial before you dig, Alley 2, gone. Looks like they've got some clear water. Well, pictures tell the story. They were smashed. All three, in fact. Dull before you dig. Take on so much water. Oh, that's... Now they're gone. Just reverse at 100 miles per hour and dull before you dig. Just buried. It looks like the demolition derby could be the big draw card. Everybody likes to see cars crash into each other, but there'll be something on all day. Circle work. We've got a little burnout pad if anybody wants to light their tyres up. Uh, within reason. Racing car enthusiasts will have something to smile about. They'll get a chance to see a different range of vehicles, including one from local sponsor Dial Before You Dig, and some V8 development series cars. With twice as many exhibitors this year, there'll be something for everyone. So we've got uh, the single action shooting people are coming along to, to talk about their stuff and have a few videos for people to have a look at. Um, Mobile homes and caravans, we didn't have those last year. Gates open at 9am on Sunday. Entry is just $2. Lauren Kekef in Wingham, Prime News. In the late classics, now that last year's handicap winner Bill Pye has pulled out, horse drivers Rex Broadbent and Peter Eames will be at each other all event for the outright title. In classic outright, Rex Broadbent has used the morning stages to further consolidate his lead the gap stretching to almost 40 seconds at lunch. We noticed that he'd lost more time on one of the stages we cleaned. Oh, well, he's always been a bit of a lair. Broadbent might have been having a joke at lunch, but it almost came back to bite him on the Mount Claude stage toward the end of the day. Turn six left. Got that wrong. That. Despite his off, Broadbent still held the comfortable lead at the end of day three. Drama two in the outright classics. Runaway leader Rex Broadbent, who said all along his lead wasn't big enough, found trouble in the transport stage. A punctured front tyre had the crew scratching their heads at Strawn. 
When Rex Broadbent started day four, he led by one and a half minutes. But at the start of day five, he would see his lead overtaken by Gavin James in his 1989 Porsche. Then, in a remarkable show of sportsmanship, one of Broadbent's biggest rivals, Peter Reams, came to the rescue. Rex and I had been discussing before the, the rally, what tyres we were going to run and all that, so he knew what tyres I had. Um, so he just rang me last night and asked me if I had any, any spare fronts down here, and we said we did, so we just told him where he was and he came over and grabbed one of our tyres. And now he's beating the hell out of me with it on. <laughs> this is all about good fun, and, and if we're going to win, we're going to win on the road, not, not by uh, just being mean and sort of leaving three tyres in the back of the ute. You know, I owe him... Just to, just for the be here, it was an incredible gesture. With car 577 back in the race, and now needing to push for victory, which looked a formality, the race for Classic Outright was on. In the Classics, by the end of Strawn, Rex Broadbent had fought back to take the lead, almost 20 seconds faster than overnight leader Gavin James, who was now experiencing some problems of his own. Overall classic results saw Rex Broadbent take the title for a second year in a row. It's nice to be able to take the, the last few stages easy, you know, and, and all the way there I'm listening to the gearbox and gee, that's a bit of a vibration that wasn't there before. But uh, no, it was, uh, it, it's just typical nerves, isn't it, when you're getting near the end. Yesterday was the high tension stuff, you know, sitting on the side of the road with a the, with the tyre off the rim, you know, the highs and lows of motorsport, I really didn't think we were going to move from there. I reckon we were going to have to buy a cosy cabin and camp in the bush. The crisscrossing the country for sportsman drag racing glory. These teams and a huge entry list head to Queensland's Willowbank Raceway for the Castrol Edge Winter Nationals and Rocket All Stars Championship glory. Quarterfinals of Super oh. Sedan. Super Eight. Sedan for cars 1099 and quicker on the dial your own system. I was just going to say, mate, Stephen Fowler was only two 100s off his dial in, so the old man will know about that. How about this for an enormous matchup? Shane Wind and Greg Fowler, two champions. Perfect one oh. for Shane Wind, the Western Australian in the Ute. Here comes Fowler. Oh, tight. <laughs> That's one of the drag races of the year. Beautiful looking car, fantastic uh, presentation. He's doing a great job. Here's the placings. Race two, Superlock Saloon Cars. Walton leads Lovell. Kudikowski, Goodacre. Kevin Weeks, Mr. Superlock in uh, P5 in car 77. Back down to Rouse as we see Whoa. Heinrich up the inside of Sutton's. Good pass by Heinrich. He's certainly a class act. I don't think it'll matter what car he's in. He's always going to be tough. And I have to concede the car does look very nice. Heinrich, you, you of you, course... OK, did that hurt? It did. And I'm going to say, of course, the South Aussie, which makes you even more proud. <laughs> The run onto the start finish straight. He's pulling away now. Here's the uh, replay of the pass getting up the inside of Mark Primer. The dial 1100 before you dig Fort Falcon AU. You're tuned to the Builders and Tradies radio show. Shh, this is secret builders business. Welcome back to the Builders and Tradies radio show. Scotty, what a bloody good weekend. I tell you, Glebe Point Road is a stinking mess at the moment, isn't it? Well, they're working on it, aren't they? Mate, it, uh, it's Could potholes be. from one end to the other. I, I went up to the guys that were cutting the trench all the way down the main at Glee Point Road there, and uh, they're laying some electricity cables, I think, or something like that. I don't know. They're digging it up. It's a pigsty. But I, I looked for the fellow that had the, the biggest hard hat on. It was quite entertaining, as a matter of fact, because he was all uh, in a fluster, and I said, mate, are you the foreman here on site? He said, nah, uh, why are you asking? I said, oh, I'm just looking for the foreman. I, I you know, do a build it as... Builders and Tradies radio show here, and I, I just wanted to compliment him. As a matter of fact, uh, slick operation. You guys are in clean-cut lines. Everything's working. Your team seems to be working fast, you know. He said, oh, I am the foreman, as a matter of fact. I said, oh, well, why were you dodging me? He said, oh, mate, I'm getting hammered with complaints. You know, the shopkeepers hate me. The bloody motorists are hating me. Everybody's just picking on us at the moment. I said, are oh, you the blokes that parked that Rangers car in and uh, surrounded it with witch hats? He goes, yeah, well, you know, we've got to do some community service, haven't we? <clears throat> he was all right, but because uh, we had Dominic from Dial Before You Dig in uh, a couple of days ago, I thought I'd ask him if he had the Dial Before You Dig plans on site. And um, you know what he said? What? Mate, he said, I don't need Dial Before You Dig plans. We work for Energix Australia. And I said, uh, mate, come on. You've got to be able to have the, uh, the plans on site. He said, we don't need them. I said, why don't we need them? You know what he said, Scott? We're not digging them up, mate. We're laying them. That's it. 